All right, what's in your shower, under your sink, in your laundry room? Soap. Lots of it, too. Everywhere. Our consumer reporter, Chris Kamura, is very curious about soap. And new at 10 tonight, he set out to answer some questions, including why are there so many types? Why is some so expensive? And can he wash his hair with a cheap bar of soap? Soap. Stored in every corner of our home and stocked over several aisles in the store. We suds up every day, but what do we know about everyday soap? It's kind of a magic thing. We asked two PhDs to school us on soap. Lesson one, that predictable label. New and improved. Dr. Amy Simone. My first degree is in chemistry. Explains that these labels aren't lying. Soap's origins trace back as early as 3000 BC. Today, it is regularly revised, new, improved, and often patented. You have many mixtures. She says that alphabet soup of a formula alcohol epoxy is forever sodium carbonate evolving sodium chloride. Armies of corporate chemists are constantly changing the recipe. One adjustment is all that's required to add new and improved to the label. That's all it takes though is to, is to modify one of these yeah. and then suddenly it's new. Yes. <laughs> But it's not change for the sake of change. It probably is new and improved. Yes. Chemist Kevin Dunn literally wrote the book on soap making. What it is that makes soap do what it does. He explains that chemical engineers tweak soap's DNA to deal with the country's many flavors. High pH, low pH. Of water. Hard water, soft water. Today. So how did your soap turn out from yesterday? Dr. Dunn is helping teach a class of amateur soap makers. Making soap. I interrupt to ask about the cost of soap. Solid bars are cheap. Liquids like shampoo are expensive. But why? Part of it is name appeal. Part of it is just the cost of raw materials. Fundamentally, it's all just soap. Dr. Dunn says soap is theoretically interchangeable, but there are definite differences, and going cheap is probably a mistake. Can you wash your hair with a bar of soap? Yes, I give you permission to do that. Will you be pleased by washing your hair with a bar of soap? Mm, probably not. That helps explain why there are so many soaps in the store. I think I understand, until he reveals soap's dirty little secret. Well, it's mostly not soap if you go to the grocery store. You walk down the aisle and what you're mostly looking at is detergent. Upon closer examination of the label, we discover that what we call dish soap, for example, doesn't actually say soap. It's dishwashing liquid, AKA detergent. Dunn explains that soap includes natural ingredients. Detergent compounds, however, are man-made. Does it matter? Dunn says no. I think they're all terrific. As a chemist, I can really admire the ingenuity that chemists and chemical engineers went through to make a molecule that was never in nature to begin with. Still, some people. It's kind of soft. Like the novices here. It's a higher melting fat. Are delving into chemistry. You could make it in your kitchen. And making soap. It's ready to go. Themselves because we can make exactly what we want and put exactly what we want into it. Dunn loves that so many amateurs It's going to have some salt crystals in there. ...are practicing his profession. Some of these people didn't make soap until yesterday. The Soap Authority, finding joy in a rising tide. I had never done that before either. It's really cool. A cascade of chemical knowledge, cheering on what he sees as a new dawn. Kidding aside, Dunn genuinely sees more consumers turning away from synthetics. What's this on top? And toward homemade soap. He calls it a natural revolution. It is a, definitely a revolution, and we're kind of at the epicenter. That's really new and improved. Sounds very good. Chris Kamora, Fox 13 News. It's very interesting. And where can you make this soap yourself? Well, Sebring. A company there called Essential Depot sells the ingredients and hosts weekend seminars year-round to make your own soap.